Hi, this is the Tropical Dibbit for Thursday evening, July 23rd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, there's a lot to talk about in the tropics. We have two systems in the Atlantic, newly formed Tropical Depression 8, which continues to look better in the Gulf of Mexico, and Tropical Storm Gonzalo, which has looked a little less good today. And we also have impacts potentially to Hawaii, and we're going to start in the Pacific real quick with Hurricane Douglas, which has become a major Category 3 hurricane today with a clear eye and a donut-shaped CDO. And so this is a very healthy-looking hurricane. The good news is that by the time this gets over to Hawaii uh, this weekend, it is not going to look nearly this good as it has to pass through some cold water to get there. We can see this on the SST map. Douglas is somewhere down here and has to move over this green area where sea surface temperatures would only support a weaker hurricane uh, at a maximum and uh, this will be encountering that cold water and decaying significantly on approach. Uh, but it could still be a, a fairly decent storm, pot potentially even still a hurricane by the time it nears the island chain. And there will potentially be a little bit of elevated shear to deal with. This is the GFS showing the location of Douglas on Sunday. And uh, this is encountering just a little bit of that subtropical jet to the north of Hawaii. It's not a lot of shear, and it comes in very late. So chances are it's going to be mostly ocean temperatures that govern how Douglas behaves on approach to Hawaii. And then after that, it's all about the topographical impacts, because a storm that gets anywhere close to the Big Island uh, gets affected very strongly by the tremendously tall volcano there. So uh, it'll be a lot to do with exactly how it approaches the islands, uh, but direct impacts seem pretty likely at this point, and the official forecast does show Douglas passing right through uh, the island chain, and uh, could be a hurricane still, perhaps with winds of about 75 miles per hour at a maximum on approach, and again, really depends on where it is relative to the Big Island. Typically, uh, if it tries to move directly into the Big Island, that destroys the vortex rather quickly. We've seen this with storms like Azel a few years back, and that would typically spare uh, the largest wind and potential storm surge impacts to the downstream islands. But if it tries to come in a little bit farther north and avoid the Big Island, it could hit some of these other islands more directly, and uh, that could potentially cause potential for coastal flooding and a little bit more of a wind impact. But the big thing with Hawaii is, is always going to be the, the potential for mudslides and flooding down the very steep topography as these storms do dump a lot of rainfall, especially on the upslope areas where the wind is pushing uphill into this volcanic terrain. So this will be something to monitor very carefully. It could be one of the more significant systems to impact Hawaii directly in the last several years. Um, and uh, we'll see warnings and watches coming within the next day or two uh, for the islands. So we'll keep tabs on this as it approaches. We're going to switch over to the Atlantic now, where again we have two systems to talk about. We're going to start with Tropical Storm Gonzalo. Uh, this is the Eastern Caribbean here with the Lesser Antilles. South America down here, and uh, this is our tiny little storm, and uh, we've been talking about how these tiny storms are fraught with difficulty when forecasting their intensity because they have tremendous fragility and susceptibility to dry air and shear, but they can also wind up very quickly on you and get very strong uh, very quickly. So it's always a little bit of a balance. Right now the main development region has been pretty dry. This part of the Atlantic is not super moist, and this is what Gonzalo has primarily been struggling with, and the trouble with being tiny if you're a storm is you don't have a large circulation to pick up moisture fluxes off the ocean and wrap that moisture in to the storm core. And so since Gonzalo is very tiny, uh, the little moisture bubble it's trying to maintain is also tiny, and so it can be easily invaded by little ingestions of dry air from its environment. We have dry air to the southwest and dry air to the north, and that's been periodically getting entrained into the circulation. Last night it took a big bite of that dry air, and it really destroyed the convective structure that we were talking about yesterday. It had that nice little curl and a formative eye wall uh, that really disappeared this morning, and the system has looked a little more anemic during the day today and has not quite recovered, and this suggests that some of the most bullish models uh, like the H wharf uh, are likely going to be too high on the intensity with this. This is what the H wharf thought this was supposed to look like as of 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Basically, a hurricane on the model with a closed eye wall in the moisture field. That is clearly not what we have, and so these uh, model solutions can be tossed out. What we also don't have is a storm that has dissipated like the European model had. So this is kind of a compromise at the moment. Uh, what's it going to do going forward here on approach to the Lesser Antilles? Well, 
at the moment it doesn't look so great and conditions aren't necessarily going to change very much during its approach and uh, we would probably expect it to continue struggling to generate enough sustained convection to intensify a ton more. Right now it has max winds of about 65 miles per hour as an estimate. I wouldn't expect it to depart too awful much from that value during the next couple of days, but again, tiny storms can behave unpredictably, so keep an eye on the forecast and don't assume that that is going to be the case. Right now, the official forecast still has this become a hurricane on approach here, and so a hurricane watch is still in effect for Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, and uh, this may or may not get removed in later forecasts depending on whether they think this will still become a hurricane, but for now, uh, be prepared for a potential wind impact um, as this comes roaring through, uh, but it will be gone pretty fast and uh, the potential for some heavy rains and strong winds for a brief period are of course a hazard that should be paid attention to. Uh, this could still come far enough north to impact Barbados directly, but the weaker it has stayed today, the more it has cruised along just a little bit more to the south. And so this official forecast south of Barbados may be looking pretty good here uh, as the system has not started deviating northward as it could have if it had been stronger today. Uh, what's it going to do once it enters the Caribbean? Well, things change a little bit for the system um, after it crosses uh, the island chain. This is the GFS showing the moisture field and showing the storm here. And uh, once it crosses through, uh, things are a little different. The sal, the sal bubble is still up here. And if we look at this on the 700 millibar plot in the mid-levels, we also have, this is the sal bubble. Behind that sal bubble is a giant, giant tropical wave. You can actually see it just showing up on the right side of your satellite screen here. There's the sal push, there's the edge of the sal, and then there's this really, really large tropical wave that's going to follow the sal bubble um, toward the west. And as that happens, uh, it's going to start imparting a steering influence on Gonzalo. And uh, what that's going to do is this giant wave envelope is going to start pushing out of the southeast the mid-level part of the vortex at about that 700, 600 millibar level where the tropical wave exists. But at the surface, uh, the flow is still just straight to the west. So what's going to end up happening is this tropical wave is going to start tugging the mid-level part of the vortex in a different direction than the surface vortex is trying to go. That's going to be a pretty nasty piece of mid-level shear that will probably try to decouple the vortex, and that's going to make it difficult for it to survive if it still looks weak the way it does now um, once it crosses into the Caribbean. If it was a bona fide hurricane that was very mature, could be a different story, but at this point there's a significant chance that this just tries to weaken a lot after entering the Caribbean. But we'll talk more about that after we get past the impacts to the islands. Right now kind of expected to just cruise west-northwestward, but keep in mind even if it does dissipate as it shows on the GFS uh, and some other models, we could still get enhanced rainfall over the terrain of Hispaniola, and the flash flooding there is always a primary concern even if it's not a storm at that time. So we'll keep an eye on that going into early next week. Okay, we're going to switch gears now back out of the Central Atlantic where we were talking about Gonzalo to a larger storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical Depression 8 formed last night as it gained convective organization around a broad circulation. And if we take a closer look at that, uh, you'll see that this really has a nice look to it. Very organized uh, satellite appearance with strong clockwise outflow coming out of it on all sides. And uh, the convection still a little bit ragged just because the circulation is not particularly strong yet. And this is the time of day where convection is least favored over the Gulf. Uh, but we do have clear rotation over a rather wide region. And so this has been continuing to gradually organize. We had a recon plane in there earlier today, and uh, this is what it found. This was early this afternoon, after lunchtime, central time. And uh, they found a pressure of about 1,000, 8,000, 9 millibars, but you note that the wind barbs were all very light here. During the first pass, they came in this way, and uh, they found all this teal color, less than 20 knots of wind within the first few dozen miles of the center. Very broad, loose circulation with the strongest wind way down here to the south. During the second pass, it did start to get a little bit tighter. They came this way and found more 20 knot winds a little bit closer to the center, uh, but then they had to go home. And so it's not clear whether the circulation has continued to contract a little bit during the afternoon. The reason this matters is because a TC needs to be sufficiently uh, tight in its core in order 
order to maximize the efficiency of the thunderstorms trying to heat the core, cause the pressures to lower, and the winds to strengthen. So as soon as this gets to a critical point of being a well-defined, tighter circulation with a maximum wind that's close to the center, that's when this could really start to intensify more than it has been thus far, which has been very slowly. There is a new plane en route as I record, and by about 7 p.m. Central Time tonight, we will have more information about the structure of this storm. The interesting thing about the earlier recon mission is it found the center way down at about latitude 26. And if we compare that to what the HWARF thought was going on today, it thought that the center would be closer to 27 latitude with the mid-level center down near 26. And if we look at uh, the visible satellite picture close up, what we have had is a slight tilt to the system, not due to shear, but just due to its organization, where we had the low-level center a little bit, little bit northeast of the mid-level center. But what the recon mission earlier found was in fact this separation is much less than models thought and uh, the two may be becoming vertically aligned a little bit sooner than some of those models anticipated. And as soon as that alignment occurs and the circulation gets tight, as I mentioned before, that's when this could start strengthening more. And the way it looks now, it likely will strengthen before it reaches Texas, as it has about a day and a half, maybe two days, if it moves a little slower, before it makes landfall. That's a lot of time. This looks really good now, and conditions are favorable. It's just a question of priming the environment with continued convection and eventually getting that circulation to tighten. Seems like it has enough time to do that, so we are expecting some intensification. And the National Hurricane Center does as well, showing this becoming Tropical Storm Hannah shortly, moving westward toward the Texas coast. We talked about that little left bend at the end here and a little bit of a slowing down. And we'll be watching this slow down very carefully because the more time it gets over water, it will likely be strengthening at a pretty uh, decent pace by the time it approaches the coast. And so exactly how much wind impacts the coast will be dependent very much on just how quickly it gets to the coast. Right now, National Hurricane Center has it getting winds of up to 60 miles per hour at a maximum by landfall time. It could potentially even get stronger than that given how organized it looks today, uh, but we'll see how it looks tomorrow after we have more recon data and we know whether the circulation is tightening up. So we have tropical storm warnings uh, on both sides of Corpus Christi. Note that the warnings extend outside the cone because this is a larger storm and the cone only tells you where the center is going. So we could have impacts even outside the cone that you see on the screen. So a wide swath of Texas coastline could see heavy rain, gusty winds, and given the slow-ish movement at landfall, we could see the potential for flash flooding as rain continuously falls for a couple of days over the region. And again, the exact point of landfall could shift. We still have some uncertainty here. You can see how wide the cone is, but right now expected to be in the vicinity of Corpus Christi. And again, is expected to be strengthening as it approaches the coast. So do be prepared. Make sure you have a, a hurricane plan in place just in case um, and be, be ready for flooding most of all if you're in a flood prone area. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.